everyone, it's Miriam with a Y. Well, the holidays are upon us, and winter is definitely here. The first flakes of snow are actually falling in my area. So how about we paint something with alcohol ink that has kind of a winter holiday kind of theme? Maybe something with some snowmen, or some Christmas trees, or how about both? Maybe something kind of smallish that we could use for Christmas cards or cut up for ornaments. Okay, sound like fun? Awesome, let's do this. I'll be working today on Graphics Opaque White Craft Plastic. It's my absolute favorite substrate because it's so easy to clean back down to the white. And as far as alcohol ink ready synthetic papers go, the price really can't be beat on the graphics. But everything I do today on this substrate can easily be done on ceramic tile. Let's say you want to paint tile coasters, once sealed that you can use for the holidays, or if you have ceramic ornaments or glass ornaments, everything we do today on this can easily be done on those as well. So you're not just limited to working on synthetic paper. We'll need a couple of inks. I've pulled out probably more than I need, but I just pulled them out to have them handy. In the mix, I have a couple different greens. I even have a couple metallics. And for my gold, I really like pinata brass and a couple other colors for sky and maybe some ornaments. Okay, a palette will come in handy for sort of dispensing some ink and adding alcohol to thin it as necessary. A couple different paint brushes. I have a liner, a flat edge brush, and just a small kind of fuzzy brush. My alcohol for this is 91% alcohol. If you have 99, I would add a drop or two of water to it. And the reason for that is 91 evaporates slower than 99. And when you're painting, that kind of helps. 99 works great, but it evaporates so quickly that you're constantly having to re-wet your alcohol. So that's why I'm using 91 for this. I wouldn't go so far as 70 if you can avoid it, because 70 sometimes makes your alcohol ink a little, I don't know, curdly, kind of clumpy, it's weird. So if you can, try 91. And then I've got a couple of fine liners just for detail. I particularly like the Sakura Microperm, but the Ultra Fine Sharpie works very nicely too. If you have micro brushes on hand, I think you'll find them very handy for this. If you're not familiar with these disposable little things, they're designed for the dental and cosmetic industries. They come in a couple different sizes and shapes and are great for applying things like dots and small details in alcohol ink paintings. If possible, I also recommend regular cotton swabs or, you know, Q-tips too. For the first image, let's make a snowman. Decorating a tree. Hey, it could happen. <laughs> I don't know, I've never seen it happen, but it could. <laughs> to start out, I'm going to lightly sketch out the rough shape of both the snowman and the tree just to have a sense of where they're going to be in this space. Next, I want to put in a background of some sort. I'm just gonna make a simple blue background, but you can go all out and make a whole scene if you like. For a simple sky-like thing, I just thinned one drop of pinata sapphire blue, because this color is really intense, with some isopropyl alcohol. Now, how much alcohol you add depends entirely on how dark or light you want your background to be or your color. Now, if you're working on synthetic paper like this graphics or Yupo or anything else, you can go as light as you like. I mean, really, really light. Because these substances have tooth to grab onto even super thin ink. But if you're working on tile or glass, something that has no tooth, remember to add blending solution to very thin down ink 
or it won't be able to bind or stick to your project and it'll rub off with the slightest touch. Okay, now with a wet brush, wet with alcohol, I'm just wetting the background where I intend to add ink. As long as my ink is wet, good and wet, it won't show brush strokes as it dries. It'll have other wavy, kind of cloud-like shapes maybe, but I'm fine with those and actually like those. So that's what I'm kind of going for. My next step is to clean my snowman shape. Now, as I do this, I don't mind letting the left edge of the snowman retain some ink because that's gonna become part of his shading later on. After playing around with the shading a bit, I decided to go with a slightly more turquoise color just for a slight difference from the background. I mean, it's very slight, but you know, it made me feel like I made something, some artistic choice. <laughs> In order to get a decent fade from virtually no color on the right side of the shading to more color on the left, I start with a brush that's really nice and wet with nothing but alcohol. And my strokes begin. And while those first strokes are still super wet down on the surface, I start introducing more and more color as I work my way over. And doing it this way will give me a smoother, a more blended sort of look with a light to dark transition and fewer pronounced brush strokes. Sometimes I like brush strokes for texture or deeper color, but not for something like this. Now let's move over to the tree. I'm just using pinata lime green for this, but any green you like is fine, even a combination of greens. My first step here is just to get some color down. Nothing perfect, just the rudimentary tree shape. The trick to this particular tree texture is all in the shape of your brush. Use the flattest brush you have, one that really kind of tapers down to a really flat shape when it's wet. For this, you want it to be damp more than wet, and with the end of the brush, lightly pounce over and over. If your brush is quite wet, your individual pounces are gonna bloom and spread widely, which you're gonna see in a bit. For this to work best, it's better if they stay thinner. If you do get some blooming, just wait for it to dry and pounce right over it again. Now I have my brush angled in such a way so that my branches, that that's what I'm kind of creating with each pounce, kind of point upwards. But you know, point your branches however you want your tree to look. Now keep doing this until you're happy with your tree's shape and color. Like I said, you can add other greens if you like, or you might want your tree to be a color other than green. I'm getting a little blue mixed in on the edges because I'm sort of pulling in the color from the sky-like background and I'm really liking how that's playing in with the green. Now I've kept my tree kind of light in color because I've got to remove some of that color for ornaments and it's much easier to wipe away light colors than dark ones. But another option, especially if you want to be making a darker tree, is to use masking fluid first to keep your ornament areas nice and white. So like you put in where you want your ornaments with some masking fluid and then paint your tree on top of that. Then when you remove your masking fluid, you've got the white area for your ornaments. But for this project, I wanna use what most people have on hand. So I'm gonna just use a damp with alcohol cotton swab. So it's not wet, it's just damp and I'm cleaning out areas for my ornaments. And have fun with this too. Make whatever shapes you like. 
and th think you would enjoy coloring in later. Maybe if you're making a big painting, you might get really elaborate with your ornaments. But for this simplicity, you know, thing here, I, round is good and it's traditional. So I'm just going with round shapes. <laughs> Now that we know where our tree and snowman kind of end, how about we give them something to stand on so that they're not kind of floating out in space. <laughs> For that, a nice wet, again, with alcohol brush with just a teeny tiny itty bitty little bit of blue or turquoise in the alcohol is all you need. In fact, you may, may not even need any because you can get some blue right off the sky. But just make a few random mound shapes with your brush and then let the ink do its thing. It will very kindly <laughs> dry with light borders for you, like light blue borders for you, which is going to suggest a snowy surface. And if you kind of repeat a couple of strokes, it'll even fade out the color here and there. I just love that about alcohol ink. Okay. Let's work on our little snow guy. I'm going with red for his hat and scarf. And the red that I'm using is pinata chili pepper. But, you know, choose whatever color you want to make your hat and scarf. For the scarf, it's just a curved band under his head. And then kind of two ends blowing in the breeze. Or if you like, you might want them hanging down when that's fine too. And then I put a round shape where the band meets the two little branches of the scarf. And that suggests kind of like a knot. And that's, the, that's it. Therein lies your scarf. Now his hat, I'm going to go with like a knitted-like thing. So for this, I'm happy to have some brush strokes to suggest that. I played around with the width of those brush strokes. Like I started out much thinner at first and, you know, kind of kept doing it until I was happy. And then I settled on a wider stroke because I thought that too thin was a little bit too much detail for this simple card. Now it helps to make the top of the hat first because once that's done, making the bottom part I don't know what you call that, the cuff, maybe, I guess, of the hat. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's automatically going to neaten up the top section for you. It's going to, all you have to do is brush over the bottom of those, and it's going to clean them up for you. I, another thing I really love about alcohol ink. And then after finishing up the hat, I kind of decided I wanted to add a little more depth of color to the scarf, make it a little brighter and also give it some texture too with some brush strokes. And yeah, I think that looks better. Before tackling the details on the snowman, I thought it best to lightly pencil in where everything would go. So a couple of branches for arms. One of them I'm putting it in, in like an upright position as if he's decorating you know, the tree. Then a couple of eyes, a carrot nose, and a smile. Now, when drawing snowmen, I'm a line smile person. But if you're a coal smile person, definitely do that. It's your snowman. For the carrot, I'm just mixing a little tangerine with some red and coloring in the nose with a fine brush. If I wait until the brush is nearly dry, I can add a little bit of extra color on the bottom without disturbing the first layer. Because like, you know, if, if the brush is wet and then you go in, you're just gonna be removing the color you have and pushing it aside. But if the brush is almost dry, that color is gonna sit on top of what is underneath it and it's gonna give me a chance to give the carrot a bit of shading underneath. For the eyes and smile, I'm just using a simple alcohol-based fine liner. They dry instantly and, you know, it's quick and easy. 
This particular one that I'm using is called a Sakura Microperm. But like I said earlier, uh, Ultra Fine Sharpie is just fine. For the cheeks, I'm going to do something similar to the shading we did earlier, but on a much tinier scale. I start out with a couple of strokes of light turquoise, which looks messy at first, but it's going to get better in a minute. Next, with a teeny tiny amount of alcohol, I'll gently work my way toward the edge of the cheek. So what I'm actually doing is guiding the alcohol. It's going to push against the ink in front of it. And if I do it right, <laughs> I can get it to make the shape I want. And you can absolutely do this too. This is just a matter of practice and getting a feel for how much alcohol to have on your brush. Less is definitely best. And how to guide it. Practice on a scrap piece that you don't care about. The beauty of Graphics Opaque White is that you can use the same practice piece over and over. Now, obviously, a much simpler option is just to make a cheek shape with one thin stroke of the brush. I do it this way because I'm a little nutty and I like the faded, softer in inner edge that you get. You do not need to be as nutty as me. <laughs> now, with a simple thin stroke, though, I do add a shadow under the hat and scarf eh, just for a little bit of depth. And then I also thickened the smile a little bit because it looked a little, you know, pale and weak. Next, the coal buttons. I went with gray ink so that I could add a little bit of black for the texture later on. I then gave each button a sculpted kind of mini mound of snow on their bottom left sides to show that they were kind of pushed into the snow, not just kind of glued on. And, and later on, off camera, I also remembered to do that to the carrot and the arms where they got stuck into the snow, but I forgot to film that part, I'm sorry. Um, the shading for those mini mounds of snow around the coal was done just like I did the cheeks on his face. For a little extra, <laughs> with a cotton swab, I cleaned off an area above the hat to add in a pom-pom, you know, just for fun. And then with a micro brush, I cleaned off an area for the star at the top of the tree. Now for the pom-pom, I'm just pouncing with a brush that's damp with red ink. Be careful with this. The brush needs to be really almost dry. Better almost dry than too wet because otherwise the <laughs> your pom-pom could become the size of a sheep. <laughs> You know that alcohol ink can bloom like the Dickens and get away from you pretty darn quickly. So again, less is more for this. So better to start out too dry and then kind of gradually get a little damper than to start too wet and then, you know, ruin the piece. For the arms, I'm going with a couple of values of just basic brown with, uh, and I want them to have like a sense of texture. So I'm definitely going for lots of little visible brush strokes. And I also aimed to have the bottom of the branches be darker for shading kind of purposes. And then once I knew for sure where the branch holding the ornament for decorating would be, I cleaned out an area for the ornament he would be holding. Time to decorate the tree. For that, I'm using Marabou Metallics. To be honest, the ornaments are pretty small, so you hardly see the metallic aspect. So any color you like is fine. I'm definitely using micro brushes for this step. I find them a lot easier to control when painting in small round objects. Since they're stiff, 
You know, they don't push out to the side here and there like a brush can. And for tiny amounts like this, I just load the ink onto the micro brush straight from the bottle. After a couple of blues, rather than using another micro brush for purple, I just add some pink to the blue. It saves on brushes. I picked pink next, and then after putting those in, I added yellow to that brush for some corally and reddish color. Now, Marabou's metallic blue is really more turquoise, so by adding more turquoise to the micro brush that ended up being purple, remember from before, I'm able to get a bluer blue now. Turquoise and pink makes purple, and then the purple with a little bit of more turquoise gives you more of a royal blue. And then to balance out the colors on the tree, I throw in another yellow ornament, and I decide to make the biggest ornament my favorite color, teal. <laughs> Okay, now let's make these look a tad less flat. You can do this with white ink or pearl ink. I'm just using pearl because I'll be using it later, so the bottle's here. All I'm doing is adding a little highlight in the upper right corner or, you know, edge of each ornament. That bright little spot will immediately trick the eye into seeing these as both shiny and more spherical than just flat. Now, if you go with the pearl ink, you might need to let the first stroke dry and then add a second on top. Pearl is easier to control than regular colors. It blooms less if you've shaken the bottle really well, and it can be layered. Like I said, just make sure to shake your bottle well so that you get lots of mica on your brush and not just the clear liquid, because if you only have the clear liquid, A, you don't have pearl, and B, it's gonna bloom a lot. <laughs> When the ornament highlights are done, I use the same pearl ink to paint in the star at the top of the tree. I chose pearl because it shimmers nicely. Now another option could be using one of Marabou's glitter inks. That would be really cool too. With the fine liner, I drew in some toppers and hooks for the ornaments and I made sure to make the extra ornament look as if it's hanging on the snowman's um, uh, hand. <laughs> Claw. <laughs> hand, yeah. I used the fine liner too to add some more detail to the branches, to give some fringe to the end of the scarf, add a little fuzz to the pom-pom, and to add a little outlining just on the shady side of everything. Now, I chose to darken the shading on the snowman. Now, this is a ridiculously risky move at this point, but I I'm living dangerously. Do not follow me into this rabbit hole, by the way. <laughs> Do all your shading before the scarf and before the branches are in place, because this is really dangerous. <laughs> And, and because I'm going for more of a drawn look with this piece, I wanted to give the snowman a partial outline also, but I didn't want to use black. So since I have a turquoise fine Sharpie, I went with that. And uh, I also used that to help the star on the top of the tree pop a little bit more too. The last step for this piece is adding little gold dots with pinata brass. This ink is hands down the shiniest alcohol ink out there. No other brand's gold shines this beautifully. Now the pinata line has a gold too, but personally, I think the brass is much prettier. It's just, uh, I don't know, it's like less yellow. It's not, 
not exactly rose gold, but it leans more in that direction. It's just, it's just very super pretty. At the end of the video, I'll show you how these little dots look once they're dry. They will look like gold leaf. It's really awesome. Okay, now let's move on to another painting, okay? All right. For this painting, I'm just doing the head of a snowman. This one will not be Christmassy because, you know, not everyone celebrates Christmas. This will be a non-denominational snowman. <laughs> it can even be a snow woman, actually. I have a very light sketch already down on my piece of graphics. This is a snowman I've drawn for years in colored pencil when I make resin covered pins, but I've never done it in alcohol ink. So let's see how it goes. I'm starting out by putting in the shading for the face. Same principle as before. Lots of alcohol in the middle of, of the head and adding more color toward the edges so that I have a decent transition of color. Now, out of force of habit, I tend to put my shading on the left side of things, but this is gonna need a little shading on the right side too. Much less than on the left side, but still it's gonna need some for two reasons. One, it's actually going to help the head look more spherical. And two, because I'm not putting in a background this time or doing an outline either for that matter. So we need to know where the right end of the face kind of stops. Otherwise it'll just blend into the background. Now I've also put in a shadow that's gonna go under the hat. So that's what that top line is. This time around, Let's do a top hat kind of thing. I'll make the brim a little floppy so that it can maybe look more like a girl's hat. <laughs> I'm using pinata gray. For part of the brim, I thin it a bit to make it lighter. And then for the darker underside, I use it straight from the bottle. On the top part of the hat, my first strokes are mostly just for me to see where the hat is because my sketch is so light. I don't want all those brush strokes to show at all. Remember, like in the background in the first painting, the trick for this is to have the entire area stay wet all at once and then let it dry on its own. So I'm working with a fairly wet brush and not letting the top stroke dry before putting in the stroke below. And then once it dries, the brush strokes will be hardly visible. So that is the trick for getting a nice even wash of color in alcohol ink. And then off camera, I darkened up the brim of the hat a little bit just by repainting it with darker ink. With a cotton swab, I cleaned off any ink that was in the area that I want to use for the band on the hat. I'm choosing blue for the band and the scarf. It's a good winter color. Once the band was in, I used a micro brush to clean up the edges. They're safer to use than the cotton swab because you can really see what you're doing since they're so small and they really help to get nice, precise lines. Now, to help see what I'm doing with the scarf, I paint in the outline with a fine brush. I didn't want to just make the pencil lines darker because those might show through the painting and I didn't want that to happen. So this way, these will just blend into the ink I'll use later. Now, to add some interest with the scarf, I'm going to not just make it one even color. First, I'm going to use ink that's pretty thinned for part of it and try to avoid brush strokes. And now you guys know, to know the trick to that. And then what I did was I waited for the ink in the palette to evaporate a bit so that it would become darker. And then I painted the rest of the scarf. 
And then with a fine brush, I used some really evaporated ink off the high part of the side of the palette. And I used that really dark concentrated ink to put in some contour details on the scarf. Now, I like the two values of blue on the scarf, but I thought that while still staying monochromatic, it could be even more fun, so I decided to put in some dots. Now, I'm using a brush, but a micro, a regular paintbrush, but a micro brush is really good for this too. With a regular brush, if I only very, very lightly touch the tip of the brush to the paper, I'll get a teeny tiny dot. And then if I press a little harder, I'll get a bigger one and it'll also be a little darker. And I like the mix of both the differences in value and differences in size. I think it makes it all the more interesting. And then, of course, for the completely matching ensemble, <laughs> it made sense to add some dots to the hat band, right? <laughs> I mean, she's a little fashionista, so, you know, everything's going to match. <laughs> now then, with that done, I'm preparing to work on the face by cleaning out the area for the carrot nose. This nose is pretty much just like the other one, just a bit bigger. Some orange ink. And then let the ink on your paintbrush dry a bit at the end so that you can use a bit of that to add some shading to the underside of the carrot, if you like. Now for the snow around the end of the carrot. Now if steps like this are scary, Micro brushes are good because they hold a lot less alcohol than paint brushes do. So a narrow tipped micro brush like this one holds a particularly small amount of alcohol. So mistakes are really harder to make. And also the, the ink on the alcohol on the micro brush is also going to evaporate pretty quickly. So you can't get in too much trouble. <laughs> Since I went with a closed mouth before, well, let's do an open mouth this time. And simple cheeks. <laughs> I'll probably obsess about them off camera later, but for now I'll just do just one little line for each cheek. Instead, here with you, I'll spend some time on different eyes. I'm going to do the same oval shape, but I started with gray and then I slowly built up the black area until I got a preliminary highlight that seemed good. And then with the tiniest hint of pearl, I added two tiny dots for a little sparkle in the eyes so that you're really drawn to them when you're looking at this image. And then, <laughs> I chose to give her a tongue to add some color to her smile. Because, you know, look, if the other snow person can decorate a Christmas tree, she can have a tongue. <laughs> Maybe unrealistic, but it seems fair. <laughs> and with that, our pieces are done. Look at the shine of those golden dots. Oh, love it. I hope you had fun and got some ideas for your holiday cards or ornaments or painting in general. Let me know with a thumbs up. And if you'd be so kind as to share this with friends, uh, social media, groups, etc., it would mean a lot and definitely helps my channel. Tell me in the comments which of the two pieces you liked best and what you might make after seeing this. Individual links for everything I used are in the description box below the video. As always, may the inks be kind. <laughs> Go let your creative nature shine. Please stay safe. Happy holidays. See you soon. Bye now.